everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. The other day I was unboxing some Alien vs Predator unicast miniatures and somebody in the comments mentioned um, about basing up miniatures and how it's something you don't have to worry about with those Alien unicast models because they already have sculpted bases. Um, and it got me thinking that maybe I should do a little video just talking about um, scenic bases for miniatures. Now, um, if you're doing rat and confar models for a big army, normally um, I would suggest don't spend a huge amount of time on, on the bases. You can get um, special basing paints from Games Workshop, which just you can slap a bit of that on and you get a, a good effect. Um, I tend to use sand and gravel, occasionally a bit of flock grass and things like that. Um, but when it comes to hero level miniatures, I think the base can add a lot of interest. And I play a lot of skirmish games, and in particular this this chap here is, is from the skirmish game Anima Tactics, which unfortunately is a discontinued game, but I've still got a lot of a lot of miniatures for it. Um, and in in a skirmish game like Anima Tactics, every character is hero level. They're all they're all badasses. So um, Anima Tactics in particular, I took the uh, the the effort to do special scenic bases for all of the models. Uh, so I thought I'd do a quick video today and just show you some of the bases and how you can make a base and tie it in with the nature of the character. So first up, um, don't ask me to um, pronounce or even remember the names of, of the characters from, from Anima Tactics, because um, I don't. But um, this is actually sort of like a half-demon character. He came in the starter set, um, and he is sort of um, he's a, a capable, destructive warrior. Um, but he sort of have, has demonic powers. Um, I don't, I'm not going to go into the lore too much because I don't really know huge amounts of, about the lore. I, it's, it's, it's typical sort of fighty nonsense, really. Um, but uh, from from his pose and everything else, and and his um, his nature, he kind of has this sort of air of superiority about him. So, for this particular character, um, I, I had a pack of. These are resin ruin pieces, and I had one that was exactly the diameter of the base, uh, the, the base inset. So I was able to stick that on, uh, drilled a hole in the top of the pillar, and, and pinned him in. Uh, a few dry leaves and a little bit of flock grass, and um, he sort of stands, stands tall and proud on a pillar. I thought that was quite fitting. For this particular character, and um, yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty effective and not difficult to do. I mean, I, obviously, I had a pack of resin resin pillars, which which made life easier. Um, uh, and for this character too, this is his um, associate that came in the dark starter set. Um, the starter set had two miniatures, and and I did the same thing here. I used um, some some ruined pieces that I had and mounted her up high. She's got that same sort of, they both have that, that sort of looking up into the air, the noses in the air, sort of looking down on humanity type pose, um, which lent itself very well to being up, uh, raised up as, as a piece. And also she's got this amahusive scythe, um, far too unwieldy to be of any particular use. And as you can see her tail uh, wraps around it, and because that tail goes lower than her than her feet, um, it worked quite nicely to have her raised up. I used um, some additional pieces of rock um, to to raise it up a little bit more and to add a little bit more around the edges. And again, with the um, the autumnal leaves, which I thought was quite a a nice uh, addition to these particular bases. Um, because in the in the, the, the cartoons and stuff, you always get like the swirling wind and the and the leaves blowing around, and also there's something about sort of uh, an ancient race of demons that, that maybe sort of being uh, maybe dying out, maybe getting hunted, and um, that sort of dead leaf motif I thought was quite fitting. So there we go. And again, that was a uh, resin resin pillar pieces. Um, this character is was from the light starter and uh, she's your basic buffer um, she she has like healing and, and 
protection spells. Um, and her base is actually, um, this is a disc cut from, if you do uh, model railways, you can get like sheets of flagstone plastic. It's sort of embossed with a flag, flagstone pattern and you can use it to make your, um, your platforms and things like that for your model railways. So I had a sheet of that, I just cut it to size, um, stuck it down, uh, painted it up and, and pinned her through it. Um, through the, I put a pin, metal pin on the bottom of her foot, drilled a hole in the base just to secure her in place. And again, um, tiny little tuft of grass and some of the, the, the leaves, uh, um, that, that leaf motif, I've tried to sort of continue through a lot of the anima tactics pieces. Um, and again, it sort of, it sort of, in, it sort of fits with that, the, the wavy hair and she, she's creating, um, this is quite badly painted, but that's supposed to be a magic bird. That's not a real bird. She's summoning that from light. Um, but I'm not a good enough painter to make it look proper. And uh, here is another magic user. Um, he's more of a traditional wizard. Um, so I wanted to have him on a magic circle. And this magic circle is actually from the old Games Workshop Manor House. They had like a sundial, it was, all, it was like a sundial piece that you could put on the front of the house and I didn't use it on, on my house. I had it in my bits box. Um, it was pretty much the perfect size to mount straight onto the base. Um, just painted it up gold, put some leaves on it. Um, I wasn't actually very happy in the end with the leaves on this, but it was kind of too late, they were glued on. But the, the color of the leaves, the autumnal brown of the leaf, uh, of the leaves, is too similar to the gold disc on, on the base. Um, so it looks a little bit messy and, and it obscures a bit too much of the detailing, I think, on the magic on the magic circle. So I wasn't so happy with this one. Well, there we go. And what else we got? I'll show you one more. Um, this is another character that, that, that came in. This was from the light base set. And he's basically just a, uh, a massive knight with a with a massive sword as you can see um he is a very slow character he's 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 very slow but very powerful and he had this cool sort of striding stance so um i got some pieces of slate and i layered them up in such a way that when i bonded him to them i i bonded him with um epoxy resin um lots of epoxy resin <laughs> um uh, he, he kind of looks like he's stepping across the rocks and then because he is um he is a slow and brutish creature i put on the bottom of his base there i had a tiny little snail in my bits box and i can't even tell you where that little snail came from um, but I painted the snail up because I thought it was quite funny. I've got this slow, lumbering, powerful knight and this little slow snail on, as a, like a little character motif on his base. And again, yeah, with the, with the, the leaves. And there we go. So, uh, so that's just a few examples of uh, ways in which that I, uh, I will base up heroes. Uh, if you're new to modeling, um, it's not something that you need to be doing straight away. It's not something that you have to immediately start doing. It's something that I think is worth doing for your hero characters. For your rank and file troops, um, uh, I think it's called like Ag Agrilan Earth or something uh, that Games Workshop does, which is just like a, a, a paint that goes crackly and it looks great. Um, and that's a really good way to start doing basing. But do paint your bases, um, even you know, put a bit of flock on them or something. Um, it, it, it does make a difference. Um, you'll notice uh, that all of my bases are black around the edge. That's just uh, me personally. I like the edges of the bases to be to be black. I don't know why. It's just something that I like on, on my, my my models, and I do it on all of them. I do it on all my Games Workshop ones as well. But anyway, there we go. That's just 
a little look at, at some ideas for, for basing up hero level characters. I don't know if it's interesting or not, but um, but there you go. Anyway, I guess I'm done. Thanks for listening to this random meander through my thoughts. I'll catch you all again soon. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.